Noise Churches, we welcome our Father to the Gospel Platform. Put your hands together, make some noise as we welcome our Father. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. You, we, we, we are, we, we are allowed to put, we are allowed to put a, an African spin here. You can sing, our Father, we love you. We are allowed to, to make that spin here. Our Father, we love you. You are a gift from God. Our Mother, we love you. You are a gift from God. We love you. We love you. Our Father, we love you. Do we have ladies in the house? We want to rejoice. God, God heard our prayers. God heard our prayers. Our Father, we love you. Our Father, we love you. to finish service early so you are doing long things so singing and dancing then you say you said you need to finish at set and to finish service so please <laughs> now i wanted to buy this alastair get this to, to, he's come to love me so yeah you can <laughs> I can't get up. Can I, come I, I know you can't get You have a speaker. I want him to be just this, what they call this, the first white sign for Baba Guti, yeah. this one. Yeah. Number one. No, no, Number one. Yeah, say a few words. Don't look. If, Not too many words. No, you yeah, too many. Then I... Okay, okay. Dino Kokwiza Sai Mosi Mosita Rajesu Christu. Amen. I've just got a short word. How many people in this room tonight have known Archbishop Guti more than 50 years? Please. 50. Huh? No, 50. No, not you? One, yes. One, two, three. 50. I've known him since for 51 years. We meet here in Dallas in 1971. So I am the very original. Even I came a few months ahead of, Baba, of, of, of uh, Bishop Bianchi. I was a few months ahead. But between the two of us, we've known him for a hundred years. I was amazed to hear... I, I, told, I told my friends in Zimbabwe that I wasn't coming to travel there after I was 80 years of age. I, I'll soon be 80, but not yet. But then I heard just a week ago that Baba Guti was traveling and he was 99 years of age coming from Zimbabwe. So I changed my timing. I, I said, now if he can come at that, it, I'm still going to follow in his steps after all these years. Baba I would have come, I had to change my plans to come here. Amen. I didn't come to speak. I didn't come to have good time. I came only for one thing. To love my father. Amen. After all these years. I love you, Baba. You mean so much to me. 
And I thank you for all the wonderful work you've done all around the world. I, lo I love you, and we give, we give God the glory, don't we? Amen. And Amai Guti, we honor you too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. You already know me all over the world. If you call all the people, you find uh, I'm a father, all kinds of color, all color in the world. So God spoke to me through when I was many years ago. So here I am. And we don't know. You remember when you when you say, because your 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 first one, you're gonna die before me. Be careful. <laughs> no more. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> Thank you, please. You may be sitting, but we're rushing this. <laughs> Yeah, that's another uh, dentist. When I went to the dentist in South Africa, they said, oh, no, don't put too much expensive things because he's going to die quickly. <laughs> but that means he's going to die before me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you don't, you don't know me. You think you know me, but I think you don't know me because I know, the way I know you don't know you wait think about me, the way you interpret about me. You know, it's only me, God told me, say, I'm going to give you more of uh, many years to pull my people who are supposed to die. So you're going to pull them so they cannot die quickly. That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> so he was afraid to go to Zimbabwe. He said, I'm, no, I'm too much. Dumb. When he saw me running, he said, I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> so brother and sister, I'm trying to change it to keep the time. I've come here just to love you and to encourage you as a speaker tonight. But uh, in a, I already remember when we were uh, asking another uh, pastor, say, stand up, uh, clear, uh, clear your names. It's like me. When I arrived in America, we were in this, uh, Arizona. Then uh, I said, I was, not before, after that, then I'm, I'm going to Dallas. All the churches of most of Zimbabwean churches, they say, good is coming here. It's very bad men. All that they gather together. So we must stop him to come here in Dallas. And that they gather. Then I say, I'm coming to Dallas. So they, they gather together again. Say, so we must try to stop. Now, when I arrived in, in, in Dallas, there was no way for me to preach before I answered those questions. So I came, I didn't preach. I have to answer all the I wrote a book about this, uh, answering preaching and arguing preaching, testimony preaching. Then I came here to answering preaching. I began to say, you know, people are saying this, people think about it like this, People are saying this, I said, after I have oh, finished those trouble, then I able to, people begin to receive me. Sometimes when you, when you try to preach and the people are not trusting you, you're wasting your time. But that I did in Zimbabwe, uh, I did it in Malawi too. When in Malawi they say, ah, 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 the secret which is very bad with They say, they're very short men, got a thick neck. That's why they think when I, when I arrived there, and uh, ah, this people came to see bad men, but they gave their life. So, so tonight I'm gonna ask you one of, of my son who was, uh, what is George, George River, George, uh, Ruizy, come, where are you? So he's gonna, he's gonna speak tonight. He's gonna, He's going to share the word of God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. And amen. Go ahead. Keep the time. Yeah, keep the time.
we may take our seats. Shall we pray? Father, we give you the glory and the honor. We thank you for who you are tonight. We thank you because you are here. And we thank you. Our hearts are open to receive from you. Be glorified, God, for giving us deep understanding of your word. We glorify your name for coming to meet us at our different points of need. Thank you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank God so much for the wonderful time uh, God has afforded me through his servant to stand before you to share from the word of God. Uh, I love God and I love my church. And I love my parents. Um, so I was born in this church um, and grew up in Sunday school. Um, became a youth in this church. Um, I was born in the church by default. My mother gave her life to the Lord in 1965 at a place called Nyanyazi. And uh, so I was born in the church by default. I didn't choose to be in the church. Uh, so I, I became a biological product of the church then. Uh, growing up, I, I, I messed up, but um, I was what they call in my language, being insane or crazy, but in the church. Um, so, and I have not known any other church. I, I love my church. I have not known any other church. Um, so the other time I met another lady, who, it was a man here in the US who said, I'm glad you're back. And I said, back from where? <laughs> because when word went all over the world that I had left the church, which I had not done. I said that at the time, it never even crossed my mind to do that. But I, I have learned that the other time uh, lies were spoken about me. And I went to Baba and he said, my, my son, I want you to know that being lied about is the oil or the gasoline, is the fuel for our work. So now I understand that I needed that. Because it's not easy when you love your church and you hear words like what I was hearing. So that, that never crossed uh, my mind and it never happened. Um, I thank God again who allowed our, uh, our father to work in the Bible school for more than 10 years. Um, every time I would meet him, he would say, stay there, my son. Stay there, my son. Stay there, my son. I was also itching to go out there and pastor a church. But I thank God for the, that kind of time at Amphic. Uh, where if you are not gifted, you can stay there and not preach anyway. No one gives you a gift for Christmas unless Baba did it. He, he did it many times. No one else would do that. Uh, I'm talking about those who know our church, what they do to pastors. It, it never happens. That I'm, these days I'm told it's better now. Um, so I felt like, why is he wanting me to be here? But it trained me to trust in the Lord. It trained me to pray for 
something you could call symbol or shop. Um, one day my wife said, there's no soap to wash the, uh, the, the diapers. And I said, you know our account is no man. Let's kneel down and pray. So we knelt beside our bed and prayed for soap. Um, and what happened was, that was around 10 a.m., 1 p.m., a couple came to our house. Uh, that's, that's Pastor Zanamobi's brother. Uh, he was a student then. With a bar of soap. And said, we just felt like bringing soap to you. When I moved to uh, the United Kingdom, I don't know what happened. When God wants to pass, make you to pass through a school, he just does it. Um, at our workplace, we, we don't have salaries, we have allowances. So I went November, no allowance. January, no allowance. February, no allowance. We were in Scotland that time. I called the finance chairman. He said, Ah, oh, we were told you're on probation. I called Baba and I asked him, I say, did you tell people that I'm, I'm, I'm on probation? So what happened was we, we began sweeping the house, not for cleanliness, but to pick up coins to buy bread. We did it for two, three days. The third day, it wasn't enough. And we were praying. And we were praying. Then the day the bread was not enough, the man was not enough to buy a loaf of bread. Overseer Maoko called from Australia. And he said, Where, which city are you in? I feel like sending you some money. And he sent us 50 uh, pounds. So I was trained to trust God. For you to know that is God doing that. There's no one in the first world who can send money to somebody in the first world. Because they assume that you, you have a livelihood. Uh, I thank God for Apostle Joe is here. We worked together for those many years at Amphic. Uh, because of that training, I, I know I see some of the students here which we, who, whom we trained those years. Students will say we have a project. Um, and we want to raise money and we want to go and preach somewhere to get money for the project. I would always say in those meetings, let's not use that method because we are training them that any day they will make money, they will think about preaching. Though they are doing it for projects now. So, I'm saying this to say God has helped me through his servant and the assignment I've been given not to preach for money. Um, one overseer had me say this in Zimbabwe and then he said you, you, you said you don't, like, you don't want money. I want to invite you to my rural province for Easter and I want to see if you will come. I said I will come. Then I went there with my own car and with my own gas and preached and enjoyed the Lord in that rural area. So this is briefly um, me. That's briefly who I am. Um, I thank God for Baba's teaching 
when, when we were pastors here um, in the morning today, he mentioned that um, when you are preaching in a place, you need to build uh, the church on the pastor who is local. Um, yeah, I remember. You know, when, when, when you grow up being an evangelist, you evangelists are the kind of people, I mean, those, no, not, I mean, those I grew up seeing. You leave time to them and they will throw the jacket away and come up here and they are bubbling and they begin to, the Bible says. So, I'm guilty of that. Um, one day I was teaching in uh, Jamaica. This time it wasn't about the local pastor, it was about um, the church itself. I, I was teaching, teaching, teaching on spiritual warfare. And afterwards, Mama said, my son, because we are planting a church here, when you are preaching or teaching, yes, you are preaching Jesus, but you build your teaching on the church because they have to receive the church here. So I have been learning. I, I, I am being schooled. So it took me time to be able to stand up here and talk about the local pastor and build the church on the local pastor. But my wife is very good at that. Uh, and I've been learning from her to do that. So I, I felt like when he was speaking in the morning, he was talking about me. Right. So I said that the other time in January, I am a real big Sunday because uh, Dr. Laven said, uh, you people, you call people big Sundays. But me, I call myself, I'm a real big Sunday. So, because if Baba was going to have 10 like me only, 10 of me, it wasn't going to be all right. But I thank God for his love. For me to be standing here today is his love. Um, I, I thank God. I love you, Baba and Mama, with all my heart. Um, and I love my church with all my heart. I'm like my friend who is in the UK, uh, those who know Gift, Gift to Michael. Uh, he said, we will not leave this church. Even if we hear that there are some people who are worshiping a God somewhere in, in the church, we we'll just go and say to the God, go away, go away. And we continue worshiping God in this church. Baba is talking about discipleship and a good heart. Recently, I have discovered the fastest way, although challenging, of having my life waked up, waked out. I was reminded of um, uh, what Jeremiah, when he was taken to the potter's house. And the Bible says the potter was making a vessel on his wheel and it was mud in his hands. And the Bible says then he made it again into another. My background, the way I grew up uh, not only as an evangelist, then, then my kind of background, I really need to be made again into another. That can only happen in the presence of God. God only can make me again into another. I won't be long here, but what we are going to do is we are going to allow God I, I know there are some who have never experienced it or felt it that God can move and you feel his movement. I'm talking about feeling, not knowing feeling his movement and you feel his touch 
Remember Daniel when he prayed and fasted? Daniel chapter 10. He said, after those 21 days, I felt the hand of the Lord touching me. We need those experiences. When you see and feel the hand of the Lord touching you. And tonight, by God's grace, sometimes when you are, I'm afraid to always say evangelist, evangelist, because I, I'm no longer one, I'm now a teacher. You are tempted to say, Jesus, so he's here tonight. But tonight, I'm not going to do that. We are going to allow God to move in our hearts, to move in our lives, to touch us. As he does that, God is going to do unique signs and wonders tonight. Unique signs and wonders. Second, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 to 10. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Um, the other version says here all that God has prepared for those who love him who hold him in affectionate reverence for those who love him who hold him in affectionate reverence who obey him and who gratefully recognize the benefits that he has bestowed They say in um, motivational speaking, I'm sure most of you have heard it. They say, if your mind can conceive it, your mind can achieve it, or you can achieve it. If your mind can conceive it, your mind can achieve it. They also say, if you can see it with your heart, you can see it with your eyes. They also say that. But I want to say to you, that's a low level revelation. To say if you can conceive it, you can have it. If you can see it, you can see it. It sounds very powerful. But that's a low level revelation. Because God is wanting to do that which you cannot conceive. God is desiring to do tonight that which you have not seen, that which you have not heard. That which has not entered your imagination. That's why the Bible says he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can think or ask. I have come tonight to say to USA, there is more to God There is more to God than just coming to service every Sunday. And we get greeted and we go home. There is more to God than me to go in my sermon book when you invite me to pick up a sermon. I need a message. Accessed through the Holy Ghost. 
brought from the deep things of God. Listen. The Bible says the Holy Spirit searches the mind of God even the deep things When you get the grace, by the way, what I'm teaching today is what is that? That's I was talking to Bishop Shots line, and I'll say that's what is on my heart these days. I'm hungry. So I, I'm sharing with you my heartbeat. The deep things. The Holy Ghost can take you to another world. A world of the deep things. When you dwell there and you come back to the people, they don't understand you. This is exactly why Baba says, come up here, my children. Come up here, my children. Because he is living in a world we don't understand. Baba, I'm sorry to say this. I don't know how it will, it will come to you, but I'm sorry to say this. When you live in this kind of world, you do things which people don't really understand. Who would know that our father would postpone EJ's burial? Because he wants people to go through the 10 days. Have you ever thought about it? I, me, myself, I really think about these things when I hear them. It's strange. You don't understand that. But it's the world he lives in. And I have come to say you may not by tomorrow get to where he is. But at your level and my level, we can seek God and have such a relationship. Um, when his daughter Tino died, Tino was my friend. When she died, the last day at the funeral service, he did not come. Because he said, I have no message for the church. When you stay in these deep things, in this other world, I, I went to Cayman Islands with um, Pastor Tim. Um, when we were about to leave one of the members said I want to take you to the ocean so we went and um, he, he took us into a submarine that was my first time in a submarine and we went down. We are talking of going down miles under the water. Miles. When we got down there, the, we had a tour guide who was explaining everything. I was mesmerized because I discovered that there is another world down there. Another different world. Vegetation of its own kind. 
mountains of their own kind down there. Creatures you don't see on the surface when you go to the sea. Creatures, it's living, but it has no shape. They are down there. They showed us a ship, a warship that was sunk during the Second World War. It's hidden down there under the waters. I'm saying this to say, Holy Spirit, take me into your submarine. I want to go down to the deep things of God. So, you know how the Bible says, you, you see, you, see, you know how the Bible says, uh, my thoughts are not the same thoughts you have. They are not your thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. My, just as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. But I bring you good news. We can tap into those thoughts. And the Bible says in the same chapter, for we have the mind of Christ. What Paul is doing in this passage, he is trying to refute what the Corinthians believed in. The Corinthians believed in wisdom. They believed in philosophers. They would have a conference like this and have philosopher after philosopher saying or addressing a thing. Then afterwards, they would sit down and then begin to say, what do you think about speaker number one? What do you think about philosopher number two? That's Paul says, when I came to you, I came not with enticing words of men's wisdom. For I did not seek to know anything among you except Christ and him crucified. And now he begins to explain the wisdom and he says, this wisdom cannot be comprehended by the human mind. And then that's where he gets into these things. Now he says, there are deep things which we get into. And when we speak to you and declare those things to you, you can't understand them. I've come to say, there's more to God. There's more. Amy, tell me, your you are you tell me when Baba Guti said this church is going to grow more than Roman Catholic what world was he in and what did the people say when the other year Baba Guti said when everything was lavish in Zimbabwe, everything was there in Zimbabwe. He said, those who have money, can you buy imperishable things? He is not an economist to forecast economy. He said, buy things because hunger is coming. What world was he living in? Do we understand when he says, come here where I am, come up here. What world was he in? Uh, come on, don't, mis don't mistake me. I'm not saying we can be like him today. But I'm saying you and I at our level. Let's experience at our level these deep things. Let's go down. I, I always say, let's go. You know how they say deep sea diving? Let's go God deep diving. It reminds me of Ezekiel's vision. When he said, I saw a river flowing from underneath the threshold of the temple. And he says, there was a man who took hold of me and we began crossing the river. At first, it was in my angles. 
Then we went and it was by my knees. And we went, now it was by the waist. And we went and he says, it became a river in which I needed to swim. I've come to say to the USA, for how long are we going to live and go deep? And we are so comfortable. Baba, you were speaking to me when you were saying, be provoked. When you see somebody excelling, be provoked. But if we are walking in the Engo Deep River and we don't feel nothing about it, we don't care. The greatest inheritance which our father can leave us is not all these buildings. If he can leave us that that's what we see this church to thrive until Jesus comes. That if in every assembly God can give Baba just two or three people there in every assembly who are going to be hungry for the deep things. That's the greatest inheritance. I like testifying. I like testimonies. When you live in another world, people can tell by just looking at you. I was saying to, to, to the Midwest um, like this past weekend, if you are by the bus station and somebody asks you for a cigarette lighter to say, do you have a cigarette lighter? It shows that you have nothing about God <laughs> on your face. So my wife and I, my wife and I, uh, Mama Guti, uh, I, I think um, our sister General Babanyamba was there when we were at the Midlands Airport, and we saw this this Muslim guy. And he was trying to help us check in. And he said to Baba, who are you? Manchester, Manchester yes. Manchester. Who are you? Give me your name. I want to Google to learn something about you. There's something different about you. All of us were surprised, but, but, but Mama laughed and said, ah, you are seeing it now. I hear this everywhere we go. When you live in this world of the deep things, you carry a glory with you. You, you won't need to say, I'm the man of God here. I'm the woman of God here. Respect me. That's why the Israelites said to Joshua, we are there for you. We will follow you. As long as God will be with you as he was with Moses. I listened to a TED um, when Baba preached in Colorado many, many years ago. And mist was seen on the pulpit. Mist. I'm just angry. I'm just saying, Baba, I cannot really do all that in, in that magnitude, but ha, at my level, man. At my assembly, man. Something must happen. The whole year, nothing where people can say that was God the whole year. And we are happy about it. Business as usual. I'm not talking about the size of your church. You can have 5,000 members and know how to manipulate them. People are trained to move crowds. People are trained to make people to weep. Why were they falling when Obama was speaking and people were collapsing? Some were crying. Was he anointed? <laughs> we are crying. We need the real thing. That's the greatest inheritance. 
I was saying to the Midwest, I, 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 that's the most recent that I'll keep referring to that. I, I was saying to them, what will keep this church moving ahead is when we grab it from him. This thing I'm talking about, when we can grab it from him, that's what moves the church. We can do everything to win people and win locals and as long as it's not founded on a deep knowledge of God, we cannot keep them. I'm challenging myself and you guys. There is no one white, black, yellow, brown who can ignore the presence of God. No. If we can have him in our churches, But are we really serious? Today I'm not talking about gifts and the anointing. No, no, no. I'm talking about just having him going deep, having God. Gifts. I, I, I told you guys um, the other time I, I was telling them powerful people, sometimes they are not strong. But strong people are always powerful. So it's not the giftings and the anointing I have learned in the few past years I have learned that what keeps you I told you my, 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 my testimony, what kept me focused in my church when people were saying things and so forth was two things my love for God and remembering Baba Gudi's love that's what kept me So I'm saying here, anointing, gifts, they won't keep you. You need strength that comes from knowing whom you are worshipping and having the deep things, relationship, the deep things, relationship. It will sustain you when you go through things. Hey, people, bad things happen to good people. And I've come to say, when you live in the world of the deep things and you go through these things, I learned something from Shadrach, Michigan, a bad nigger. They said, the God, Nebuchadnezzar, we will not bow down to your image. Because the God whom we worship is going to deliver us. Listen, many, many of us will like that portion. The next portion says, but if not, if not, how many can survive the if not here? We will not say, why me? Why me? God, why me? People who survive the if not are people who are seeking this other world of the deep thing. I'm almost done. I just come to invite one or two people who will say, Pastor, I want to join you in your hunger. I want to join you in your hunger. Just one or two people who are going to pray and say, God, the Bible says, Blessed is the man whom you choose and you cause to approach you. That's Psalm 65 verse 4. Blessed is the man whom you choose and you cause to approach you. So the prayer tonight, God, cause me to approach you. 
hear me, guys, to the leaders. We have not done enough unless we disciple them to pray. I have no excuse. I have, I have, I've had few chances of traveling with the servant of God and seeing what it means to pray without ceasing. I spent three months continuously with our mother in Australia. I know what real praying is. I have no excuse. But I've come to say to you, leaders, I'm talking to you what was modeled, what I watched. What are they watching in the elder? What are they watching in the deacon about prayer? Are we dis discipling? Ah. Have, have we been discipled ourselves in prayer? Let me finish with this one here. Um, the scripture we read was taken from Isaiah 64, verse 3 to 4. Isaiah 64, verse 3 to 4. That's where the scripture came from. That's where Paul quoted it from. When you did awesome and amazing things, which we did not expect, you came down at Sinai, the mountains quaked at your presence. For from days of old, no one has heard, nor has ear perceived, nor has the eye seen a God besides you who works and acts in behalf of the one who gladly waits for him. The New Living says, when you came down long ago, you did awesome deeds beyond our highest expectations. And oh, how the mountains quaked. For since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for him. I, I like what it says, you did awesome deeds beyond our highest expectations. Now listen, we are going to allow God to, as, a, as an individual, we just want to allow God to, to move. Awesome deeds above our highest expectations. Tonight, God is going to do awesome deeds beyond our imagination. Look at what you are going through. You cannot imagine you coming out. Look at the mental health of your child. You cannot imagine him coming out, her coming out. Look at the state of your marriage. You have gone through so much pain for so many years. And you can't even imagine you living in freedom. Look at the disease you have for years now. And they told you it's not curable, you die with it. You cannot imagine it. But tonight when we allow God to move, he is going to do unimaginable miracles. I know you have written yourself out. You have said this is killing me. But God is ready to do unimaginable miracles beyond your highest expectation. He is ready. But he is waiting for those who are going to yearn and say from tonight, oh God, I want the deep things. Show me something. 
Take me deeper. Take me deeper. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run. Oh, I want to run. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, can, can you stop and someone sing it with your key, please? Can you, can you stop, stop someone can sing it with, with your key? We are going to pray. We are going to say, God, take me deeper. There's more to this thing. Guys, I, I don't know, but there's more to just standing up before people and preach every day and they say we are blessed and they go home with their heaviness. They go home in their pain. Read the book, what people expect when they come to church. Why are we so satisfied? Why, 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 why? Why, 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 why? Why are we so content? Our father still seeks God. He still fasts and pray. <sighs> when did we last pray and fast to say, this week I'm fasting just to meet you? Are we not very good in praying for our needs? And, and us, not us, I'm, I'm the younger ones, the younger ones, those who are of the generation that is growing up there. What are we leaving these young people about the knowledge of the God of Ezekiel? What is it? What baton are we handing? Ah, uh, what baton are we handing over to the younger ones? If we don't pray, and show them who God is in our services, why should we go for weeks, months, no move of God and we are okay because the 30 people who were who are coming are still coming, we are okay do these 30 people know the God of Ezekiel what do they know about him what have we shown what have they seen God doing they are coming with their demons and going back with their demons coming with their diseases, going back with their diseases, and we don't care. Do you think we can lift our hands to pray? Say to God, Holy Spirit, help me to go deep. Help me to go deep. Help me to stay in the word. Seek your face. There are no two ways about it. Help me to take away time from television and put it into reading your word. Because I need the deep things. Mulele mo sandiana kaya la malaleta baya. Cry out, cry out, cry out. 
It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning. Like Daniel, we want to set our hearts. We want to set our hearts. We want to say, I am now beginning, Lord. Holy Ghost, teach me. I want the deep things. Cry out, cry out. Cry out for the deep things. Cry out. It's you and God. It's you and God. Allow him. Allow him. He's here. Allow him to touch you. Jesus, that I may know you. Jesus, that I may know you. Jesus, that I may know you. He's moving, he's moving. Let it be you and God. Let it be you and God. Ah. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. He is touching you, he is touching you, he is touching you. What you have never imagined, what you have never conceived, is happening right now. He's moving, he's moving, he's here. He's changing you like he's changing me. Ah! The Lord is delivering you, the Lord is delivering you. There's someone who wanted to commit suicide. There's someone who was thinking of suicide. You are having mental issue, mental health issues. The Lord is setting you free right now. You, you cannot die. God is taking you deeper. Don't die.
The healing virtue is flowing right now. The healing virtue is flowing right now. The healing virtue is flowing right now. Ha 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 ha. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Hey, hey, hey. Receive, receive. The healer is moving. The healer is moving. The healer is moving. Receive. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. Um, I, I want you to be bored. If you know you've been fighting suicidal thoughts, walk up front right now quickly. I'll pray with you. You've been fighting suicidal thoughts. Come quickly and stand here. I'm about to hand over time to the leaders, but I, I know the Lord showed me some people have been fighting suicidal thoughts. Where are you? Quickly come. Where are you? Be bored. Come, come, come quickly. The Lord wants to set you free. Let's sing that song. Let's sing that song. Is, 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 is he or she is coming? Where are you? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on you. Fill me up. Thank you, Jesus. Until I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run Fill me up, God. Until I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run Jesus, I want to run over. Feel me, oh God. Till I overflow. I want to run Feel me, oh God. Till I overflow. I want I want to run over. I want to run over. Feel me, oh God. Till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Can we raise our hands? We're going to ask Bishop Shazlein to pray for us. Um, God has to ignite us with their hunger. God has to drop it in our spirits. Just set your mind, set your heart to say, I think I'll take this on board. I'm, I want to do this. If there's a price, yes, there's a price. You forgo a lot of things. You consume the Bible like never before. You pray. You fast. There's a price to it. But just say, I'm ready. I, I, want, to, I want to join this group of hungry people. I will never be the same. My assembly will never be the same. My family will never be the same when God dwells in the home. Let's raise our hands as Bishop prays. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. See the hearts of your people as we raise them to you in hunger and thirst for righteousness sake, for the sake of the world, for the sake of those that are lost, but certainly for the sake of our own families and for our own peace of mind and ministry gifts. Father, Raise up out of the depths of us, the deep part where we love God, the depths of our heart, the depths of our spirit, deep in our belly. Raise the love, Father, where our language comes from, where your spirit resides. Raise in us a hunger like we've never known before. 
and let that anointing that is in this house tonight rest on us in power that we can carry. Let the legacy of our Father and His ministry and the works that have been done rest on our shoulders and let us carry them with power and with passion. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the release. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Thank you for your love. Thank you that you are available. Oh, thank you that you are available. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Thank you, people.